بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ار اي اس for folks that know me very well i'm not usually very speechless or nervous but i am truly humbled and honored uh, to share this platform with some of the most revered scholars teachers and mentors thank you much thank you very much ris for this opportunity i just might want to make it very clear that i am not an islamic scholar nor am i a theologian i am an american muslim activist that is who i am and that is what i will represent today Thank you to Dr. Hatem Bezayan for breaking down the Islamophobia industry because this system brothers is an industry organized evil with resources out to marginalize to defeat the very principles and values that we stand for as a community. But I have hope in defeating Islamophobia. And the first place we need to start sisters and brothers is we must continue to be unapologetically muslim. We sisters and brothers have nothing to be ashamed about. We have nothing to apologize for. We follow a beautiful religion. Our religion is a progressive one. It does not need for us to help it become progressive. We are not looking for a moderate Islam because Islam is already a moderate religion. In order for us to combat Islamophobia and to find the courage in our community to stand up against Islamophobia and those who inflict it is by knowing our history sisters and brothers, our history here in North America, our history as Muslims in the United States of America. In the United States of America, Islam did not show up on 9/11. Islam did not show up to America when our Pakistani fathers came here to medical school or when our families came from occupied territories in Palestine seeking a better life. Islam has been on the shores of the United States of America and North America since the days of the founding of the United States of America. Our religion sisters and brothers is deeply rooted in the countries that we belong to. We belong here sisters and brothers. This is our country. Canada is your country, the United States of America is my country, and we need to start acting like we belong here. <laughs> sisters and brothers Many folks go on national television. I've been part of many lectures where people continue to talk about Islam as a religion of peace. Yes, it is, sisters and brothers. Islam is a religion of peace. But what is more important about Islam is that it is a religion of justice. We need to stop telling people what Islam is, and we got to start showing people what Islam is. I have met, I've had many sisters and brothers tell me, Sister Linda, we have so many issues in the Muslim community, so many issues impacting us. And we see you out here, sister, sister, with these, you know, doing black civil rights work and with Black Lives Matter work, but we have so much to focus on in the Muslim community. This very statement, sisters and brothers, is the demise of the Muslim community. The fact that someone has to ask that question, for me, raises the question of what Islam do they follow and what exactly is a Muslim issue. Sisters and brothers, Black Lives Matter as a hashtag came out last year. There have been people working on civil rights for black Americans and black aboriginals and, and indigenous people for centuries. But if we want to think about this concepts of Black Lives Matter, Islam is the originator of Black Lives Matter. We are the originators of this concept because black life always mattered in Islam. And if you follow the seerah of our prophet, alayhi salatu salam, he is the first man in our faith 
that ensured that there be an important message sent out to the Ummah and those who converted to Islam, that a Arab is not more superior than a black, a black is not more superior than a, an Arab. This was a principle at the very heart of our religion. Our religion is an anti-racist religion, sisters and brothers. What we also forget, sisters and brothers, is that in the United States of America, a third of our community are African American, they are black American. So when I stand up for Black Life, Lives Matter, or when I stand up for justice or against police brutality, I march and I stand for my own sisters and brothers in my own community. <laughs> sisters and brothers, we have no choice right now but to be active citizens in our society. And we have so much examples of activism and standing for justice and against the oppressed in our own faith. Our Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, for me, was a human rights activist. He was a racial justice activist. He was the first feminist. He was an environmental justice activist. He stood for and with the oppressed. So if we are not following in the seerah of the Prophet, if we are not following our beautiful faith that tells us to be courageous, that the most powerful words are those that are against the tyrant, then what Islam are we following, sisters and brothers? We want to challenge Islamophobia, sisters and brothers. We need to challenge the narrative that we have been caught in. Many of you have watched me on national media outlets, and they tell me, what about ISIS? Condemn ISIS. Of course, sisters and brothers, we condemn violence. That should be a given, and it is actually a bigoted question when we are asked to condemn atrocious and abhorrent violence that is happening by groups like ISIS. But furthermore, sisters and brothers, it is our opportunity to take those platforms and challenge the narrative. Who created ISIS, sisters and brothers? Did you hear about ISIS 15 years ago, 10 years ago, six years ago? We have to challenge the narrative that we somehow are associated or responsible for terrorist groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda. We must stand and speak truth to power that the very foreign policies implemented by our governments have created the vacuums for groups like ISIS. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, we have condemned violence to death and it has not helped our communities one bit. You, when people tell you, where are the Muslims who are condemning violence, I want you to say, Google it. Muslims condemn violence. Muslims condemn 9-11. Muslims condemn ISIS. Pages and pages, sisters and brothers. Some of the most revered Islamic scholars in the world have written an open letter to al-Baghdadi, breaking down and deconstructing the ideology that they have twisted to justify their violent and barbaric actions. This is very available information, sisters and brothers. What I am more interested in, sisters and brothers, is not just condemning terrorism inflicted by other folks calling themselves Muslims, because if you are going to go out on the streets and condemn terrorism, where are you when terrorism is being inflicted on Muslim sisters and brothers across the world? Like when one million Iraqis were killed, sisters and brothers. When drones are killing innocent civilian Muslims in other parts of the world. If we are Muslim sisters and brothers and we're going to stand against terrorism and violence, then we must stand against all forms of terrorism and violence, regardless of who's committing that terrorism and violence. This, sisters and brothers, is a community with conviction and principles and values, and one that values all life not just the life of those who are in power. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, the time is now. I'm not going to talk about the past and the missed opportunities. I want to talk about the now and the future. I'm an organizer, sisters and brothers. My life is not on these platforms. My, my life is in the streets, in the very communities that I want to serve. I know what it means to, to, to have people power. I know what it means and what the power is of mothers and fathers and religious leaders and students and people in communities. I know what that power is and I know the potential of our community. New York City is home to one million Muslims, sisters and brothers. 
we are 12 to 13 percent of the New York City public school population. 95 percent of Muslims send their children to public schools. So when nine years ago, American Muslims started a campaign to incorporate Muslim school holidays, we worked with Jewish groups and Sikh groups and Christian groups and labor unions and elected officials and Muslim groups, Shia and, and Sunni groups, black Muslims, South Asians, Arabs and converts. We were one sisters and brothers and our campaign was called Recognition, Inclusion and Respect. Nine years of mothers walking around the streets gathering petitions, students organizing on their college campuses, on high school campuses, because they wanted to be counted sisters and brothers. It was a campaign that was organized from a place of self-worth and dignity. We were not asking in New York City public schools for favors. We were asking them for the dignity and respect and inclusion that our communities deserved. And nine years later, sisters and brothers, our community won, and we won with people power, and with coalition building, and with unity in the Muslim community. And now, New York City is the largest public school district in the country with well over one million students that recognizes my children and the children of all Muslims as part of the largest society of New York City. That was a campaign that was won by people power. That wasn't the only time that I saw people power, sisters and brothers. For over 14 years, we knew that the New York Police Department was engaging in unwarranted surveillance of American Muslim communities solely based on our faith. But we know for a fact that the New York Police Department was engaging in discriminatory police practices against other communities, including black communities in New York City. The New York Police Department was the only police force or the only government agency in all of New York City that did not have any independent oversight. Our New York City Parks and Recreation Department had independent oversight. Our Education Department had independent oversight. The Department of Transportation, you name the agency, they had independent oversight. Our former mayor of New York City said that if the New York Police Department was an army, it would be the seventh largest army in the world. Imagine that, sisters and brothers. We joined efforts with black communities, Latino communities, people of conscious, people of all walks of life in New York City, and we went after the New York Police Department. We passed a landmark piece of civil rights legislation that created the first ever inspector general, the first ever independent oversight over the New York Police Department. But it wasn't easy, sisters and brothers. Our fair, former uh, mayor, many of you know him, a very famous billionaire, one of the 92 billionaires in this world, former mayor Michael Bloomberg. When we passed the legislation, we already won. But our mayor vetoed us, so he was able to veto our legislation. And he said, not on my watch. And what he did was, is he took millions of dollars and he put it into the campaigns of opponents to the members of the New York City Council who stood proud and courageous to vote for our piece of legislation. Guess what we did? We went right back into the communities, we organized, we, we, we mobilized, and we went back a month and a half later to do that vote once again. It was 2 a.m., sisters and brothers. And people of color, poor people, our entire coalition, Muslims, non-Muslims, sisters and brothers all together, 2 o'clock in the morning, and we watched city council member after city council member vote. And what happened the second time, sisters and brothers, is that we won bigger than we won the first time because the power lands in the people, sisters and brothers. <laughs> sisters and brothers, our job as Muslims is not to change what Islam is to make people feel comfortable, sisters and brothers. Your job is not to change the narrative so you could be ex accepted by the powers to be. That is not your job as American Muslims. Your job as American Muslims is to be courageous because the adversities that we see right now as Muslims in North America is nothing, absolutely nothing in comparison 
to the trials and tribulations that our Prophet والسلام, and his companions and the first believers went through. So what you are seeing right now is a walk in the park, sisters and brothers. And if we cannot stand strong and tall right now, then we have to be in deep reflection as a community because we are demonstrating the weakness of our faith and not the strength and the courage of our faith. Sisters and brothers, we're talking also a lot about outside alliance building, building with Christians, building with Jews, building of people who are non-denominational, other groups working on other issues, social justice movements. But let's self-reflect, sisters and brothers. The, our power is going to be in our unity, sisters and brothers. It is what we build within our community because the opposition, sisters and brothers, watches us very closely. They know exactly where the cracks are. They know exactly where we are broken. They know exactly where we are divided. And that's exactly where they fit themselves, sisters and brothers. If we want to talk about Black Lives Matter, we got to make sure that black life matters in the Muslim community first and foremost. If we want to talk about feminism, sisters and brothers, we need to talk about women's equality and women's empowerment in the Muslim community. The strongest asset, the most progress that you have seen in modern Muslim America, in modern Muslim North America, is the sisters who are at the forefront of the progress in our community. They are the fighters and they are at the front lines and we need to continue to support them. We want to be included in the larger society. Let's reflect on the institutions that we create. Do we look around the table and make sure that everyone's included? Are we mindful of who's missing at the table? And do we take it upon ourselves to go out and intentionally find the people whose voices in the Muslim community are not being heard? Sisters and brothers, there's a lot of work to do outside the community, and there's a lot of work for us to do inside of the community. Sisters and brothers, a courageous, united, steadfast, committed, Muslim community, nothing can bring us down. Nothing can beat us down. Our fierce, this is, um, uh, brothers, is coming from our lack of courage, from the weaknesses in our faith. And if we put our trust in Allah, but also engage in publicly being Muslim, nothing will bring us down, sisters and brothers. Sisters and brothers, I want you to think about something very important. I think Maya Angelou might have said this, a very revered writer in the United States. It's not important what you say, sisters and brothers. What people remember is how you made them feel. People are not going to remember the five pillars of Islam, but a homeless person will remember when a Muslim fed them when they were hungry. A black, a black community is going to remember when they see immigrant Muslims show up to stand there and say, you are our brothers and sisters and we are here for you. We have to remember, sisters and brothers, that we need to show people what compassion, love, and justice in Islam looks like. That way with pamphlets on the street corners has only gotten us so far, sisters and brothers. I want to say that I am very proud to be an American Muslim born to Palestinian immigrant parents. I am very proud, sisters and brothers, to speak truth to power because I believe that my activism is rooted in my faith and that spiritual work that we have to do on the inside because I'm broken too, sisters and brothers. My heart breaks too. I get weak in my faith too, sisters and brothers. But then I remember that we are not on this earth to please man and to please other people, that we are here on this earth to please Allah and Allah only. And I want to also be able to answer the question on the day of judgment that we will all be on a line together. And you will be asked, what did you do when there was oppression around you? What did you do when young black men and women unarmed were being killed by law enforcement? Did you stand up? What did you do when 
Families were being separated by unjust immigration systems that are tearing our families apart. What were you doing when there was increased homeless people that you walked over every single day? What did you do when people treated women badly? Did you stand up? Did you stand up against those in power and those tyrants? You will be asked, sisters and brothers, what your role is. And our role on this earth is not just to live for here, it's to live for our akhirah. So be prepared to answer those questions. And if you're not prepared now, may Allah give you more time on this earth so you have more time to prepare your answers, which are going to be to talk about your actions and deeds on this earth. Sisters and brothers, we're going through very hard times right now. And all we have is each other. Love one another. Support one another. This is not the time for Muslim organizations to be competing. This is not the time to ask why her and why him. This is a time to think about what your individual role is, sisters and brothers and for us to work together to make our young people proud. Our children, sisters and brothers, are watching us and watching our every move. I am not concerned with my popularity, popularity, and that's not what we should be worried about. Malcolm X was one of the most hated men in America. But guess what, sisters and brothers, Malcolm X was also one of the most respected men in America. I care about respect, sisters and brothers. I care about dignity, sisters and brothers, and that is what our communities deserve. May Allah bless you all. May Allah protect you all and your families. And may Allah continue to instill the courage in us to stand and speak truth to power against the tyrants and those who continue to oppress us and oppress others around us. May we find the courage, sisters and brothers, to condemn all forms of terrorism by Muslims and non-Muslims alike. May we find the courage, sisters and brothers, to find our role in all so social justice movements, not just those that are directly impacting our community. May we be the best that our community has to offer, the best that our faith has to offer. Because again, sisters and brothers, we follow a beautiful faith of justice, compassion, mercy, and love. Your God is a merciful God. And your God also, sisters and brothers, is a big God. Our God is not a petty God. Our God does not say only to stand for Muslims because God created all people on this earth. Your God is a big God. And when you want an example of an activist, if you want to understand what it means to be a human rights activist, a social justice activist, a racial justice activist, open those books, sisters and brothers, and read about the Sita of the Prophet. Read between the lines, as they say, because you will find that we have the best of examples. We have the best activists to follow, and that is in the example that was lived by our Prophet, alayhi salatu salam. Salaamu alaykum, and thank you so much again, RIS, for giving me this platform. Thank you.